Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm just doing a video that I said I'd make, um, which is a reaction video for a My Thoughts video on WWDC 2020, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. Just a little bit for those last two, but I'm mostly talking about WWDC. WWDC. Bleh. Uh, let me pull up Apple's website so I have a guide. Sorry about the fan noise. Nothing I can do about that because I'm going to be burning up. I don't know how long this vid's going to be. So, first off, we'll talk about, obviously we all know what's going on in the world, so it was held online. Um, there was no public event. There was no keynote. And you might never see the old style of keynote ever again. It might be done for. Um... On the style of it, yeah, I'd say that Craig is the best guy they got um, for doing that kind of thing nowadays. I'd say they did a pretty good job with it in terms of the presentation and the style. They didn't do fake applause. They didn't try to fake the old setting. They kind of did a new thing with it, kind of like they had with the, um, the video on the Magic keyboard for the iPad. It's kind of the same deal there. Um, but yeah. There we go. WWDC iOS 14. No, it's not iPhone OS 14 as we thought it might be. Obviously, we all know that it was a decade ago. iOS 4. It was at, Well, obviously, the beta. They did a whole keynote on the beta. And it was called iPhone OS 4. Even in the event, they called it I iPhone OS 4. They announced to the very end. Excuse me. They announced to the very end. It's iOS now. iOS. And it still is, actually. Although, it, it's diverged a little bit. So. Redesigned home screen. Yes. This is something that people have been waiting for for a long time. Um. I don't know if it's quite what people asked for or not. I don't know what people think of this. But, widgets, app library, things like that. Not a huge change, but a change nonetheless. Updates. Updates have arrived. The creativity it just seems like a larger, larger auto-generated folders. Basically, just large auto-generated folders that you can search. That's all. Messages. Important conversations. I don't... I don't know what they classify as an important conversation, or how that works, but... Easier access to that, I suppose. Uh, make it out what you will. App clips. I don't understand app clips. Let me have a look at the preview. Hopefully it's not a video. If it's a video, we have a problem. App clips. Weather widget on the home screen is nice. I like that. I always wondered why the weather icon on the home screen couldn't have just been a little widget. I mean, the clock has always been a miniature widget. At least for a long time it has been. Compact calls. Very nice. Very good change. Picture and picture. Picture and picture. Yeah, there you go. That's how you say it. Good update. Pin conversations. Okay, so that's something that you can pin. Yeah. Group photos, give. Uh, okay, that's okay. <laughs> you can now reply directly to a specific message in a conversation. Mention, mentions. Weird sign of the times. All these changes look good. So. Maps, cycling directions. Now, if you want to do a bicycle run, then this is for you. 
They do have bicycle updates and changes, which is good. Guides, I don't know. This is just about maps. I can't say much. Translate, very nice. An on device offline translate. Fantastic update. I like that. Smaller Siri. Good. Better Siri, hopefully so. Home kit. Irrelevant. Activity zones looks decent. Face, face recognition. I don't know how reliable that'll be because the cameras most likely don't actually have face recognition. Safari. Translation. Fantastic. Again. Password strength. Yeah. Privacy report. Car keys, I don't know how I trust, how I feel about that. Obviously, if you're like me and you, your car is new, you can't use this feature. So, power reserve. CarPlay wallpaper, okay. Let's see. AirPods updates. If the surround sound is actually good, that'll be nice. App clips. Easy to discover and use. Okay. Eh. Looks decent. I'm not sure how much I would end up using that, but it looks okay. Privacy stuff, they love to champion that. Weather is getting better, always appreciated. I love weather apps. Game Center. Game Center is still there apparently, I didn't know that. Filter, sort, pinch and zoom. Hmm. Set default email and browser apps. This is an iPad OS as well, I assume. That makes it much more like a computer. Very nice. And it's compatible with all the same devices as 13. Good. We'll see how much of a buggy mess it is, but. <clears throat> iPad OS Scribble looks good. I'm not going to go in depth into these I'm in a hurry because I don't care as much about mobile devices so I spend too much time on that. iPad OS doesn't actually seem that fantastic but Scribble's nice. Um, sidebar and some apps. Okay. Some of the iOS 14 features obviously are there which is we went over those. Here we go. Mac Mac OS. Good grief. Okay, watch OS. Hand washing. Sign of the times. Uh, the app seems weird to me. Just, I guess, the design of it seems strange. Sleep tracking. Heavily rumored. But here we go, Mac. This is what I care about anyway. I know most people don't. Mac OS Big Sur. Now, it is a Big Sur is a location in California, which follows Mavericks, Yosemite, El Capitan, Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave, Catalina, and Big Sur. But this is gonna be mean to hell, and you know it. It already is, and then now it's Mac OS 11. So that was unexpected. Mac OS 11. For the first time since 2001, excuse me, they ticked over a full version number. Excuse me again. Oh, and they really just happened. And I don't like it. 
What did I talk about in yesterday's video? Exactly what they have done here. They have made the UI worse. The new app icons are dreadfully terrible. They're like half ass. They're not iOS app icons, which honestly, you know, some of those are old, 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 old icons. They didn't port those. They didn't port those. So the icons look dreadful. Weird, weird mix between skeuomorphism and flat design. Not executed well. And you lose for you finally lose the tilted app icons, which goes back to basically the start of Mac OS. So they claim that the icons are classically Mac, but at the same time they got rid of something that has been there since the start. Notification center's gone as it was. And apparently you click the clock. So how do you uh change your clock settings from up here. Do you have to go into system preferences now? Apparently so. More precise display and sound, but it takes up large portions of the screen. No more Bluetooth thing by default. You just got control center. There is Wi-Fi status still. Spotlight is moved, which is sort of interesting. Um, Menu bar is completely transparent. It's like thick. Menus, tab, whatever you want to call them, the drop downs are thick. There's a lot of space, which indicates to me anyway that touchscreen support is coming, which is a terrible idea, but um, they're on a collision course now. Oh, the dock is circular. It's rounded off and it's floating, just like on the iPad. Minor change. Don't care for it, but not a big that's not a big deal. Um, but my problem is the damn apps. And that this website design is horrid. Like the way that shit jumps around and it's all... Uh, like you don't... You really don't need this kind of stuff. This is the kind of trash that I hate that I talked about yesterday. Big Sur, okay. Refresh. Notification center. I mean, it is still there, but it, you have like the widgets and all that stuff. So basically, yeah, the, the sidebar here, today view and notifications, that's gone. It's been replaced. And their replacement is all this fat and it's just, I don't like it. I really don't care for it. Very iOS-like notifications, which is not a big surprise. Funny to see uh, this completely new OS design on that old freaking iMac that ran Snow Leopard. <laughs> Looks identical. Rumors of a redesign were not forthcoming, not yet anyway. New Safari. This looks okay. The UI is shit, just like the rest of it, but the actual updates look somewhat decent. Page preview on tabs is nice. Translation, great. Privacy report, same thing. Better performance, hopefully so. Hopefully it's not a huge buggy mess. Messages on Mac has been updated. Basically a lot of the same stuff from iOS 14. GIFs and messages, the image search, which I thought was already there. Redesigned maps. It's okay, I suppose. Privacy report in the App Store, that's okay. Hmm.
but the app design is terrible. The finder redesign is terrible. They have compressed shit so bad. They've thrown things into sub menus. From what I can see here, I don't like it. I really don't like it. <laughs> Which I mean, is it really a surprise? Basically, it just looks like a blown up version of iPad OS. Which is just what I talked about yesterday before the freaking keynote happened. I, I, I had the stuff down and they went ahead and pulled it on Mac OS. This is not really a desktop operating system anymore. And it goes to show with this. It's really, really freaking weird, guys, what they've done here. I don't like it one bit. I like the wallpaper. I like that they're getting back to the unique wallpapers that aren't just pictures. But I don't think I really like this that much. I don't know. I don't have a supported Mac. I don't know if I doubt I'll be able to install it on any of mine here. Unsupported install even. But Not a huge fan of that. But allegedly, or not allegedly, factually now, um, Macs are switching to in Apple chips. Arm. Risk. Whatever you want to say. They're switching. Which has been rumored for quite some time, now years. And it's finally happened can't say I fault Apple necessarily for it, because Intel's so stagnant that they kind of have to release computers around. Either they release computers with no real CPU updates, or they release them on Intel's schedule. So I can understand that. Uh, wanting to have control over that. Uh, efficiency, power, usage, consumption performance per watt, I mean, like, I can understand, I mean, there's a bug up here, I, I can understand, nah, it's just a cut in the wall, I can understand why they did it, but I, we'll see, we'll see, they have released a Mac Mini for $500, now, I think you have to be a developer to buy it, you have to have their developer program to even see it, I think, um, but it's an A12Z Mac Mini, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's just a dev kit unit. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see what people think of that. And it is running Big Sur beta, apparently. And, um, yeah. I don't know, guys. <laughs> But the thing is, there is Rosetta 2. We're going to have to wait to see it. It is kind of funny, Rosetta 2 and Universal 2. So they're, re they're re reusing those old terms from the Intel, from the PowerPC Intel switch. Um, and, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see how it plays out. Could be very good, could be very bad, but the thing that I know is that game uh, Steam support is probably going to dwindle. A lot of the stuff's probably going to dwindle. We're going to have to wait and see how it does with virtualization and different things like that. But this could very well mean the end of Windows support. No more boot camp. Um, no more Windows game ports. None of that. It's all going to go away. And in a few years' time, all of your Intel Mac apps probably won't be supported. So it's just going to be like last time all over again. But make it out what you will. So that's one of those things where we're just going to wait and see. But yeah, that's basically all the updates. Um, there was some other minor stuff that I didn't talk about and I did omit some details that I didn't need to talk about. So yeah, my thoughts, iOS 14, not a huge update, but it, well, I mean, it kind of is a huge update in a way, and I think it's alright. 
iPad OS is a small update, but the features that are there are nice. Mac OS Big Sur. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Goodbye, Mac OS 10. Mac OS 11. We're in a different world than we were when Mac OS 10 was the shit. As in, like, up to version 10.4. Maybe up to, like, 10.6. So. It's not really a desktop OS anymore, it's really moving away from that. Like I talked about in my UI rant video, it's all the same shit. So, <laughs> not very pleased about that, but whatever. Well, it's one of those things where if it performs good, then they've done a good job. People can make these updates what they will, and move from there. But now we're going to talk about PlayStation 5. Oh yeah. PlayStation 5. Which is going to release later this year. 825 gigs of storage. That's a weird number. 16 gigs of RAM. What do I think of the PS5? Solid state storage, fantastic. It will be backwards compatible with PS4. Excellent. Good stuff there. Um, I actually don't know a whole hell of a lot about these before going into it because I don't keep up with gaming. There's going to be Dying Light 2. I never played the first game, so I don't know. Demon Souls is apparently getting a port or a remake. New Assassin's Creed game is coming out. Same shit, different day. Sport Games Dirt 5 is coming out. Now that could be cool. Grand Theft Auto 5 <laughs> is getting ported to it. Apparently. Yeah, just Sport Games. Ratchet and Clank, a new Ratchet and Clank game will be cool. Rainbow Six Quarantine. Mm, not really true. The one that I care about is Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know from the old days. I don't know if I even talk about this very much. But Gran Turismo 3 and 4 are some of my favorite racing games of all time. Excellent video games. Um, I'm sure that the PS1 titles are fantastic too. I just haven't played those. Oh, man. Gran Turismo 3 and 4. Fabulous games. Everything about those games is just fabulous. Soundtrack menus. Car, just everything is great. And then, then the series just went... Like, boom, boom, boom. Falling down there. Like, you could get the reference. Um, but... Gran Turismo Sport... 6 was pretty horrid. Sport was god-awful. And I'm sure that 7 is going to suck. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> what do I think of the console design? Eh. It's okay. The controller looks weird. They got rid of the color on the buttons, which is stupid. I don't know. It's... It's... Uh, it's okay. Both of the consoles... I'd say that PS5 looks better than Xbox Series X. That thing just looks like crap. It's literally just a... I don't know how to describe it, it's just terrible. 
so I don't know. But I'm not a gamer anymore, guys. So. Series X will allow backwards compatibility for Xbox One titles and the 360 and original Xbox titles that were backwards compatible on the One. Really cool. Really, really cool. Like, I, I've said this for so long, having backwards compatible consoles is awesome because that just means that there's more consoles in the world that can play these old games. So, it'll be damn cool to have a console released in 2000, I'm pretty sure this one's coming out in 2020. Yeah, 2020. In 2020, we're going to have a console that comes out that can play Halo 3, the original game. We're going to have one that can play Skate 3. I guess that's only a 10 year old game. We're going to have one that can play uh, Battlefront 2, the 2005 version. Um, other titles. There's a lot of fantastic stuff from the 2000s. Will be playable on a 2020 console. I just think that's great. So, yeah. Hmm. But, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the PS5, though. I don't know which one's more powerful. I'm not a gamer. <laughs> so... Halo. We'll see what Halo is like on the Xbox Series X, which is a horrid name. PlayStation 5. <laughs> it's just PlayStation 5. Simple as that. So, yeah, I don't know, I just don't think gaming is what it used to be. The, I don't know, I really don't know guys. This is, I think this is going to become another video. I'm going to cut this one short. I've gone for too long, but those are my thoughts. Um, gaming is not for me anymore. But if I had to pick one, I'd go for PS5. I think that Xbox Series X is a horrible console in terms of aesthetic and the name. PS5, I mean, I can see the appeal of the design. I can see it. PS5 is a fine name because it's just PlayStation 5. It's damn simple. <laughs> um, you know, if you just go with numbers, you don't really have to complicate things that much. I mean... The Samsung Galaxy phones were so good with that, you got up to S10, then just, ooh, S20, because it's the year 2020. It's like, why? Why did you have to ruin that? But anyway, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say, so. <laughs> Technology's not what it was in the past. In the recent past, damn recent past. Uh person I've had on my channel a couple times has said, but there's only so so far you can go with technology, and it's like, yeah, well, that is true. Some things should just be left, just untouched, because they work fine. Nothing needs to be changed about them. And um, that is never listened to. So, yeah, that, those are my thoughts. I'm not pleased with uh, these are, I'm not really pleased with any of these announcements. So, that's it. Catch you guys later.